I'm Faisal Anthony Naya. I'm a digital artist. I used to sketch since I was young. Um, back in the days of school, I would sketch aliens and weird stuff that most teachers thought was a uh, matter of possession or witchcraft. A couple of times when my parents were called, you know, he's drawing weird things in art class and stuff like that. But it was my inspiration because my dad exposed me to a lot of, uh, my brothers also exposed me to a lot of sci-fi films. And those films ingrained in me that, you know, I wanted to do, I wanted to do this kind of art. I'm a digital artist. I'm also a graphic designer. Digital art is like um, anything that uh, you have to use like computer softwares to enhance or to make sort of valuable art with that sort you can consider digital art. Yeah. But it's strange because sometimes it starts from drawing and then the later stages are when you go to the computer and then you enhance it and you do effects. So I consider that digital art. This is the first digital portrait I did of myself. It was one of the first assignments in uni. So they're like, ah, here's illustrator, do a portrait. I didn't know it was a thing. Then I realized that there's people there doing it, like I would watch stuff on YouTube or on MTV, like guys doing urban graphic art. Then I was like, ah, this thing is a thing. I did about three years in Kenya studying. I had a wide set of skills, but I didn't have one particular main thing I was good at. So after, after finishing college, I knew eventually I wanted to do higher learning. But even when I was doing graphic design, I felt like, no, no, it's not enough. Like there's, there's a passion that's not, it's not feeling. So now when I went abroad to study, that's when you exposed so many things. Like over there, like just art in itself splits into like 20 different fields. So you're exposed to all these different stuff and then you figure out that ah, this digital art thing is on a leg, yeah. Well, digital painting is exactly the same as painting. There is absolutely no difference with digital paint and uh, painting except that you're using a computer. And a computer is basically you're working in pixels, you're working, you're not using physical paint. But the good thing is that nowadays we have software that actually imitates actual paint. So for me, it's the whole getting rid of paint buckets, getting rid of paint brushes, having to mix paint and all that. It's all done on the computer. So digital art is literally what it is. It's art, but on the computer. And luckily I ended up in advertising. I actually had an interest in it. So I said, let me get into it so I could learn it. I never had the chance to actually go to college or university. So straight out of high school, I joined, I, I started doing art as, as trying to make a living out of it, like, you know, designing stuff and all that. But still in me, I, I, I thought, you know, I never, want my, I never want to leave my art alone. I would never want to die out for my art. The worst kind of artist is the one that lets go of his art. always owned a sketchbook so I always carry one with me. I've always never left home without one. I uh, try my best not to. Eventually in my life I was exposed to the fact that the computer could do drawing and I could draw with the computer. You know I'll sit down and I'll draw a line and then I'll say this line could be something and I start to manipulate the line and you know I'll come up with weird stuff you know stuff like that. Sci-fi alien stuff you know. Yeah. And I actually was inspired uh, Key inspiration was a book that I had when I was a kid called uh, um, 20th Century Foss, F-O-S-S. -S. It's by an artist called Chris Foss. He's one of the most 
amazing uh, sci-fi artist. And not digital, he actually does painting. So his, he drew, made me actually think of that. I love ships and stuff, so a lot of my digital art also, as you'll see, has a lot of seascapes. So I was brought up in Mombasa, and my dad was a superintendent on a ship. I got a grant from Kwana Trust to do an exhibition. So I've done a series of works for exhibitions. I've worked on cover art for musicians. I've worked on covers for, uh, there's an upcoming book for Pat Shaw. Uh, it's an old, one of the old policemen who used to really terrorize thugs in Nairobi. So he used to drive a Volvo, but the thugs in that time used to like driving Audi and that son. And those are details that I had to stick to. That, that, that it was fun, because you get to draw all those inspirations and then put it into one. I was featured in the Kenyatta's diary, so that was nice. So if you bought this diary for last year, there was like one or two weeks where I was staring back at your face. Corner Trust is the ones who told me that, ah, you know, you can apply and get a chance to be in the diary. also part of an exhibition called the Kampala Biennale. So they, they had submissions from all of Africa and they chose me. So also being part of that exhibition, traveling to Kampala, a new city, and then having people ask you questions about art, like about your work, what inspires you. That, that was dope. That was a good experience last year. The side projects I've done is, uh, I recall um, my first digital painting was way back and it was a, a meteor that was hitting Earth. And um, the thing is, I didn't have a tablet at the time, and I painted it using my mouse. The good thing was that it went on CG Society and got quite a lot of reviews. An Australian game company contacted me to make a concept for their game. And they gave me the brief and everything, and, and that was the first job I ever got using my art. Uh, I understand I never really got to produce the game, but we did all this promotional material, we did the posters, we did everything that was required for the game. I've done a couple of uh, con environment art for film, yeah, and concept art for film. Uh, when um, when they were shooting District 9 in South Africa, before they shot it, they asked artists to come up with ideas about what what this world would look like and stuff. So a lot of artists contributed towards that project. So I was included in one of them, and that was one of the privileges I had of working on a bigger, yeah, a bigger concept. When you're an artist, it's a business, so. If, if you're working alone, there's several aspects of business. There's the client service, there's the legal side, there's uh, the paperwork and the, all those things. Like, and then there's the creative side, which is big. So it's good to have uh, either train yourself on how to manage all of this on your own or best yet, find people you can work with. I think for me, it's a challenge when I have to do so many different aspects on my own. Especially in Kenya, you know, hardware is really expensive. Uh, we're not really advantaged in the sense of we can't buy Wacom tablets the way we want. We want to get the newer tablets so that we can do more. But um, I've never really thought of technology as much of a challenge for me because with the little I had, I did a lot. In fact, I did more with the little than now that I have like a full setup of stuff. And, and I don't think I'm doing as much as then. I think I was challenged then more. And I think I challenge myself a lot more than. Um, so those are, those are part of the challenge. The other challenge is actually, you know, digital art is not considered really art in Kenya yet. I mean, yeah, they're picking up on it and it's becoming something that you're being recognized for. You know, thanks to forums like, you know, um, like what you guys are having and, and, the, and Creatives Garage and different other organizations that are trying to bring all art together. I love what I do. It gives me the freedom to be creative and express myself. And uh, if you're out there and you love it, do it, man. It's, it, you, won't, you won't regret. There's seven billion people in the world, and co internet connects you to about one billion of them. And out of that one billion, there's 
3% who love what you do 100%. So that's a huge market. There's this market, just loving what you do, doing it honestly, and then just put it out there. Lucky for us, those who've gone online and they're Kenyan artists have made a name. If you Google search Digital Artists Kenya, you finally get a search result. The first page is actually relevant. You know, not like before you'd find some weird thing. You know, guy adopts dog and takes dog too. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, you'd find all those, you'd find politics and you find... But right now you find actually art being a big part of Kenya's online presence. People ask me, oh, you know, you're, you're in advertising, you don't really get to draw and all that. Why the hell do you continue with it? And, I, and I'll be honest, the reason I continue with it is because I love art. And digital art is my chosen art.